Okay, so now we're going to look at the blood cells. So we have our erythrocytes, which are basically the red blood cells. And the erythrocytes, they're basically a biconcave disc. So it sort of looks like, I mean, if you want to think about it, it's a donut that has a membrane in the center so that it it looks kind of basically like a donut with the center with a thin membrane. It's filled with hemoglobin, um, acting containing cytoskeleton, maintaining the cell shape. It has no organelles, no nuclei. So just remember when you think erythrocytes, no nuclei. Then you have your leukocytes which they're going to look almost like two sausages on a plate. And they're going to have like a lot of dots all over the place. And so this is this so this is actually sorry your basophils. Um, but under your leukocytes, you have your neutrophils, your eosinophils, your lymphocytes, your monocytes, and your basophils. And this guy right here that I've drawn is your basophil. Your basophil is the least common white blood cell. It's bilobed nucleus. So these are the two lobes. They have a large granules containing heparin and histamine, mainly for inflammation. It may assist mast cells in hypersensitivity reaction. Next we have our platelets, which are not really cells, they're non-nucleated disc-like cell fragments. They promote blood uh, clotting, they're formed by megakaryocytes and bone marrow. Um, they're also the site of platelet form, the megakaryocytes are the site of platelet formation, and they're, the megakaryocyte is an irregulated, irregular lobulated nucleus. And next thing we have is hematopoiesis, and this is basically the formation of blood. Um, so we have mesoblastic, which is blood cells formed from mesenchymal cells in the yolk sac and body sac at the third week of gestation. So if we're thinking of blood formation, so we're going to have at week three during gestation is going to be our mesoblasts. Um, at four to eight weeks, it's going to be the hepatic. And at 12 weeks, it's going to be the myeloid uh, cells. And this is just, this transition allows for the body to develop in its infancy. It also allows for the blood cells to be able to handle this change in oxygen delivery because for fetal hemoglobin, it's going to have to have a very strong affinity for oxygen because, it, you know, the child doesn't have the ability to breathe through its own mouth. So let's kind of break down what things become. So if we start with a pluripotent cell, it's going to branch off into two different areas. You have your multipotent lymphoid uh, cells and this is going to lead into lymphopoiesis and this is going to give rise to our B and T cells. Then we also have the myeloid progenitors and the myeloid are going to be basically what's found in your bone matter uh, sorry bone marrow not matter and this is going to lead to erythrocytes process called erythropoiesis. Then we're going to have the 
megakaryocytes, um, the process known as thrombopoiesis, and it's going to lead to platelets. And this is going to allow for clot formation. Next we have our monocytes, and they become our macrophages. And this is going to be the killing cells. We have our neutrophils and our granulocytes. And these guys are involved in inflammation. I should have said monopoiesis. The process itself is monopoiesis. Monocytes are the result of monopoiesis. And then lastly, we have grain. Uh, sorry, there's two things actually. We have eosinophils, and lastly, basophils. And I did not state a name because these four are known as granulopoiesis. So we got erythropoiesis, thrombopoiesis, monopoiesis, and granulopoiesis as our four main types of poiesis that comes from the myeloid progenitor and then the lymphoids, it's lymphopoiesis. Now if we look at the connective tissue, we've got something a little different going on. So our connective tissue is going to start the same way. So this is kind of a, a rehash of what we did before in the other video. So our connective tissue, it breaks up into the connective tissue proper. We have connective tissue with special properties. And then we have supporting. Our proper cells lead to our loose and also the dense. Under the special properties, you guessed it, we have our adipose. So this is where our adipocytes are. Our elastin. hematopoietic and if you remember that means blood formation and then we have our mucus under the supporting probably thought of it it is our cartilage and our bone and then lastly what we have in under the connective proper, the dense tissue, we're going to have our regular and also the irregular. So when we're thinking of the loose, what we're really thinking about is it's going to be abundant in ground substance. It has a large variety of cell types. So this is where we have our fibroblasts, our macrophages, our neutrophils our lymphocytes, or plasma cells, eosinophils, mast cells, and adipocytes. So all those cells we drew in the first video are going to come up mainly in a loose connective proper. These are going to be, uh, some are going to be elastins, some are going to be reticular fibers, and they're going to be regularly arranged. And then we have our lamina propria, which is a loose connective tissue which supports the epithelia. And so, just to get an idea of what these look like, our dense, irregular, they're basically kind of these strands that go like this. And we're going to have some elastin fibers, few reticular fibers, 
they're going to be composed of bundles of collagen approximately uh, seven, 7 micrometers. Um, there are fewer number of cells, large number of fibers, and this is mainly found in the dermis of the skin. Now if we compare it to the dense regular, the dense regular we're going to see kind of these unique impressions and then all of a sudden which I can't really do this with this pen but we're going to see all of a sudden these kind of individual cells or these individual bundles kind of appearing but it's bundled fiber so these are mainly going to be found in our tendons they're collagen bundles that are arranged parallel and they're only fibroblasts there's a short supply of the ground substance and they're not very vesicular and then if we look at the elastic connective tissue so the elastic it's kind of these odd shaped discs that we've seen before but now they're going to have to have some cross-linking that occurs and this cross-linking is going to give that strength that it needs and so the fiber types are elastic fibers they're arranged in sheets so these are these sheets that we have and they're produced by fibroblasts and smooth muscle cells um, they form the walls of the arteries sheets have uh, holes and are arranged into sheets that are held loosely together by collagen fibers and it's kind of like if you look at it if you think of what lasagna looks like lasagna noodles sort of look like this and we're gonna see under the microscope that it's gonna look like lasagna noodles laying on top of each other so our reticular connective tissue it sort of looks like if you think about like some of those fancy fences to me it kind of looks like a fancy fence like you had some rich dude who didn't know what to do with their money so they decided to put like this weird fence together and that's kind of like what these reticular fibers look like they're this strange sort of fence and they're, coll they're collagen type 3 as we saw in the last video and they have a, sp a special population of fibroblasts and reticular cells and the reticular cells wrap around the cytoplasmum, the cytoplasmic processes around the reticular fibers. Um, the distribution is a framework, uh, a framework for blood cells forming um, an area of the bone marrow and framework for the lymphoid. Now if we look at the adipocytes, we know that the adipocytes are adipose connected tissue cells sort of look like a bunch of bubbles kind of like when you're first submerging yourself under water you see all these bubbles coming up and they're gonna have that crescent shape and as you know stored as triglycerides they're collagen fibrils um, that's going to divide them they have reticular fibers that are supporting this framework that we see and they're throughout the body I mean everywhere you can think of that you've got a little chub that's probably going to be an adipocyte under the mucus these I mean you know what mucus is they're going to be what's basically down your throat and your stomach all over the place trying to coat everything to make sure the cells are fine so these are primitive fibroblasts, they're abundant um, amorphous ground substance composed of hyaluronic acid they contain some collagen, few elastin and reticular fibers and next we have our blood which we all know is conduct, uh, connect, uh, connective tissue and they have a bunch of fibers and ground substances well that is it for the this video if you have any comments or questions leave them below
Uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel.